Hi, my name is Paweł Spechalski and today next episode of INAV Black Box Analysis. What we have today on our workbench is a log from a friend of mine that is maybe not complaining, but he wishes that some of the functions of INAV were working slightly better. The biggest problem, according to, to his testimony, let's call it like this, is the problem with altitude hold. There is constant drift, the drone 7 inch, yes, 7 inch quadcopter is almost constantly losing altitude and it's not what he wanted. So he sent me a few logs, let's open them and see what goes where. Opening, opening, the logs are wait something. Okay, let's get rid of this, let's get rid of this. Let's zoom out and first step, if we want to analyze something, let's check gyros. Gyros and the gyro noise. Um, yeah, it's more or less fine, maybe not super smooth, but there is nothing very, very wrong with this log. So we can safely assume that in this particular case, the gyroscope is not a problem. If not a gyroscope, then let's compare what's, for example, happening with the magnetometer. I'm absolutely aware that the friend of mine, Ernest, thanks, was not complaining about the position hold direction or toilet bowling, but to be honest, it's always worth to check if there is something fishy happening with magnetometer. So let's just take a look and let's look for the correlation between throttle and magnetometer readout. There is nothing over here, nothing over here, something here. This was probably a flip or something. No, it was a roll. So this is completely fine. Let's go here. There is something like, uh, but no, UAV drone is changing attitude. So no, um, no, I would have to say that probably the magnetometer readouts are not correlated with the throttle. That means that probably magnetometer is just far enough from power cables to be affected by the high current situation. So no, there is absolute, there, are, there is no problem with magnetometer. Then let's find the next possible cause. Uh, what was that? Ah, yes, the poor altitude hold and constant drift. So let's display barometer. Let's find a place in the log where NAV RTH. Okay, this is fine. We have a barometer trace. Something is happening. But let's add another custom graph and let's see if there is a correlation between magnetometer and computed position. Nav post 2, that means it's the computer computed position. Um, this position vertical is computed based on the barometer, GPS and accelerometer. They more or less look the, almost the same, so okay. Everything is fine. This, this is fine, this is hard maneuver, so it should be fine. But... Um, this looks strange. To be honest, this looks slightly strange because it's fine. Both graphs are correlated, 
but from time to time something is happening. No, this was roll, so no. This was another roll. Hmm. Let me open a second lock. Maybe it will be more distinctive if there are any problems with in here. Ernest, you are flying too aggressively. Oh, this is interesting. Hmm. No. Mm -mm -mm. Over here everything looks nice, but to be honest, you see this? First it was going down, there was a jump. Hmm. Let's add another graph and display RC command throttle, if there is some kind of a correlation. This happened on the mid throttle. This there is another jump that happened somewhere here. There is throttle, but no. Hmm. There is one more thing we can try. It's the accelerometer graph. If we will be able Oh my! Um, to be honest, the accelerometer graph looks very, very, very fishy to me. It's slightly, slightly too active on the accelerometers. And uh, you see? Throttle was slightly raised and there is a huge vibration recorded by the accelerometer. Over here, now let me open the first lock again. Well, maybe we will be able to see something new. This is interesting. I think that I know what's happening. There is no very hard evidence, but this is, for example, a clue what's happening. In theory, the correlation between computed altitude, let's get rid of this, and this, is, it's nicely correlated this line with this line, but if we add the accelerometer noise to the equation, you will see that every time accelerometer smooths out, there is this slight jump over here again, while the computed altitude is flat. The same situation, no. There is again something happening over here. I think that the problem Ernest is experiences, experiencing is connected just with the amount of the vibrations recorded by the accelerometer. The output of Altitude estimator is not granular enough, to, so we could see some kind of like logs, huge jumps. But since this value depends on the barometer, accelerometer and GPS, the jumpy accelerometer can be the real problem over here. Let's take a look at the output of the accelerometers. And definitely, this is not, this is definitely too much vibration on the accelerometer. Let's correlate this graph with the throttle input. Maybe we will be able to find something. Yes, there is definitely, it's visible over here, 
correlation between throttle and accelerometer noise. Every time the throttle is somewhere slightly below the middle position, this spike of vibration happens. This is probably due to propellers hitting the resonant frequency of the frame, very often case lately. And also every time there is a full throttle applied over here, the same situation happens here. There is just too much vibrations recorded by the accelerometer, on, especially on the z-axis, to act to high enough to be able to compute the accurate enough altitude to maintain good altitude hold. Yes. If I would have to guess what's happening, this is exactly what's happening. The gyroscope signal looks good, the gyro signal, gyroscope, whoa, but barometer signal looks good, the gyroscope signal looks good, but the accelerometer does not, and probably this is the cause of the poor altitude hold in this case. I wonder about the position hold too, but let's say this is not very important. What's my advice in this case? Um, my advice is first of all to check for the vibrations. This is a 7-inch quad and 7-inch quad is everything. Everything bigger than 5 inches are very prone to vibrations because even the slightest damage of the propeller can cause huge amount of noise going to the accelerometer. The gyro usually is much safer because it, it is much more less sensitive to vibrations and we have all those notches and other filters that can handle that. But this is unfortunately not the case in, in, in a situation of the accelerometer. So first of all, check if there is a soft mount. If there is a soft mount, maybe you can have better. If there is no, no, no soft mount, invest in a soft mount. Second of all, check your propellers. If the propellers are not damaged, chipped, uh, one is shorter than the other, just beaten up, replace with the new ones. And if you are flying 7, 8, 10 inches, you really should think about the proper balancing of the propellers. The, even the slightest weight non-even distribution can cause a tremendous amount of vibrations going straight into the accelerometer. This is what I would really check. If the propellers are not damaged, replace them and really start thinking about balancing. This is all for today. Maybe this analysis was not very conclusive, but at least we found one big problem in this lock. It's accelerometer vibrations, something to be addressed. I already informed Ernest about the problem and he promised to give me a flight lock with new set of propellers so we will be able to compare one first and the next lock today, tomorrow, no, today maybe tomorrow, maybe in a few days, maybe in a week, and we will know if this thing really helped. That's all for today. Until the next time, bye.